What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So, today I kind of wanted to get into building a guitar rig, but not just from like the kind of typical overview of like, here's the gear, here's how I arranged it, put it together. I was thinking the other day about this and like all the guitar kind of rig videos that you see, and they're all pretty much like, here's how I built the rig, but a lot of them really don't get into like why they designed the rig the way they did. <clears throat> so I kind of wanted to get, you know, a little philosophical today and kind of get into that as to like why I'm doing the things in my rig that I'm doing. Um, so I guess the title of this video is going to be like designing a guitar rig with a purpose. Um, <clears throat> so probably like a lot of you, <laughs> when I first started kind of getting into all this stuff like years ago when I was like a teenager you know you don't have a lot of money and you kind of just acquire gear as you come along and you kind of try to make the best of the gear that you have and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that um <clears throat> but what a lot of people I think find them like the situation a lot of people find themselves in that I found myself in was I had gear but <clears throat> the gear I had kind of didn't work with me that great like it didn't like, playing live and writing music and recording and stuff wasn't seamless. So it always kind of seemed like I was fighting my gear. Like, I wanted my gear to do this. And I couldn't get it to do, you know, this or X or whatever it might be, right? Uh, I wanted to go from this kind of a sound to this kind of a sound. And I had to come up with a real convoluted way to make my gear do that. <clears throat> right? A lot of people these days... Well, you have a lot more a lot easier access to gear these days than you used to. So that's a big thing too. You know, you've got all kinds of digital modelers and just all kinds of information out here on YouTube and like other social media sites and stuff like that. So there's a lot more information out there today, but I think it's still good to kind of sit down and think about like what you're trying to achieve with your guitar rig. So <clears throat> the first thing that I did was when, when, when I kind of came to this revelation, like, you know, I don't have to use the gear I have. Like, I'm not stuck with it. I can actually build a rig around doing the things that I want to do creatively. And I can sell the gear that I have and get gear that will make doing that easier. Um, <clears throat> and that was kind of a big revelation for me, believe it or not. I, I just never really considered it before, right? It was just like, well, this is the gear I have. I have to make it work. Actually, no, you don't. You don't have to make it work. I mean, it will, if you do, because let's just say financially you're not in a position to where you can just experiment with gear, th then then you have to make it work. I mean, that's just what it is, you know. But um, if you're not in that kind of a situation, then you have options. You can kind of... You can, you can design a rig to do what you want it to do. You don't just have to be like, well, I have this amp, I have these pedals, that's, that's what I have. Right, so. <clears throat> it all kind of started with guitar tone for me. Um, and I'm not really going to get into, like, that too deep. That could be, like, a whole other video in and of itself. But for me, the, the basic revelation was I realized that when I would be thinking of like riffs and stuff in my head, <clears throat> now those riffs weren't just like plink, 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 plink sounds. Like there was a tone there, right? Like I was thinking of a guitar tone as I was hearing a riff in my mind. Or, you know, I'd be sitting at work or something or whatever, and I'd come up with a cool riff in my head. It took me a while to really realize that like, oh man, that, that riff in my head has a tone. And so, I started kind of chasing that. I, I didn't chase tones I heard on other people's records. I started chasing the tone I heard in my head. And that led me to where I am today with the kind of amps I use, with Marshall amps. Um, <clears throat> I don't have any here in the studio at the moment. All my amps are at my band's rehearsal space. But I'll try to put some pictures in of the gear I don't have with me. Um, I have my guitars my pedal board with me, but I don't, I don't have my amps. So... I'll try to put some pictures in, you know, 
of the amps that I use and stuff like that. I mean, a lot of people have seen them on this on the channel already, though. Um, but my main amp was a Marshall JCM two thousand, so that kind of led me down that that road. I was I realized I was hearing a guitar tone in my head all the time, and I started trying different amps out until I got an amp that was really close to that and said, okay, now how do I tweak this and dial it in, right? <clears throat> the other thing was my guitars. So I, I'd always I'd always had Les Pauls, um, and I liked playing them. I liked the way they feel. I liked the scale length and the neck radius or fingerboard radius, all that stuff, right? So I knew I wanted to play Les Pauls. But there was something very specific I was trying to achieve with a Les Paul that at the time, for me, seemed a little difficult to do. Um, I wanted a bridge pickup that was really high output, but also had a lot of like clarity in the mid range. Like I do a lot of these kind of chords where it's like you know all six, like five or all six strings, like that kind of stuff. And I didn't want these middle notes. To get lost, right? Um, the problem that I found with a lot of just kind of your like run of the mill humbuckers was they might have a lot of low end, they might have a good bit of top end, but it seemed like that middle, like those middle notes kind of got lost sometimes in all of the gain and distortion and everything. So I wanted a bridge pickup that had a really good low end, like had a lot of low end content. I didn't want it to be thin and like, you know overly brittle sounding. I wanted it to have good low end, but I wanted that low end to be really focused and tight, and I wanted it to retain that kind of middle, that kind of mid content, so these middle notes would poke out and not get lost in all the gain and stuff. And I wanted the high end to not be super trebly and like piercing and stuff. I, I wanted it to be nice and, like I wanted it to be there, I wanted you to be able to hear it, but I didn't want it to be like overly like, uh, when, when you did hear it. So, that kind of took me down a rabbit hole with pickups, and I settled on the Fastback uh, Beard Comber. Um, there's other pickups that are like this that I really like. Like, I really like Seymour Duncan JBs. They're very similar to this. Um, so, there are other pickups that do this kind of thing. It's an Alnico 5 magnet. It's really high output. That's kind of where I've settled. It's like the Alnico 5 magnet, really high output. A lot of low end, kind of rolled off on the high end, with like a nice kind of even slope on the EQ. That's kind of what I like. It, it leaves enough room for the mid range. The low end content's there. The high end isn't too ice picky or brittle. Um, and so then that kind of led me to my neck pickup sound. So my issue with Les Pauls is that the neck pickups traditionally, like your traditional PAF neck pickup, was way too fat and like wooly and not articulate sounding. And if, if you're playing like more, if, if you're playing kind of that traditional like slightly slightly broken up bluesy lead kind of stuff on the neck pickup, those pickups work for that. Like they're fat, you know, th th they get a real nice thick sound for leads. You know, I, I get it. I don't really do that though. So I wanted a pickup that was maybe a lot brighter than a neck pickup on a Les Paul would normally be. And it kind of took me a while to track one down and like figure out, um, you know, exactly what combination of things in a neck pickup would get me the sound I wanted. I wanted a sound that was very clear, very bright, and like bell-like. I'm using a lot of buzzwords here, for you know, forgive me, but I don't know any other way to describe it to you. Like, I wanted a really bright, really low output, articulate, clear tone with not a lot of low end in it. And so, finding a neck pickup that did that was kind of a challenge. Um, and Fastback Custom. I settled on the Fastback Custom Old Imperial neck pickup. So the neat thing about the neck pickup to me is that it's a ceramic magnet. So normally when people think ceramic magnets, they think super high output bridge pickup, like DiMarzio X2N, Seymour Duncan Distortion, DiMarzio Super Distortion, like, you know, that kind of thing, or any of your, like, active 
uh, you know, like Fishman's, EMG's, that kind of stuff. A lot of most of them have ceramic magnets in the uh, in the pickup, and they're just super hot. They're super bright. They're super tight. Like it's a sound. Um, <clears throat> but neck pickups, you know, a low output like PAF style neck pickup, but with a ceramic magnet. It was kind of odd. I'd never seen anything like that before. So I bought one on a whim just to kind of try it out. And I wound up loving it. Especially in front of my Marshall JCM 2000. That amp is like super bright and articulate. And the pickup just kind of accentuated all that. It was like the, the minute I played on the clean channel of that amp with this pickup, it was like that's the clean sound I've been wanting. Um, when I would go to the studio with bands and stuff, <clears throat> I would usually try to get a hold of a Strat, and it was like before I had one, or a Tele, and like do cleans on that. Uh, but after discovering this neck pickup, like I, I would just rather use this. It sounds so good for cleans. Um, <clears throat> so I never use the middle position on a Les Paul. I hate it. I, I do not like. For me, I don't like that tone at all. I know a lot of people do like it. Like my dad, for one, my dad really loves using the middle position, both pickups, because you can control, you can kind of blend with the volume controls, you know, how much of each one you want in. Like it gives you a lot of versatility and a lot of different tonal stuff. And it's like, I understand why people like that. For me, it was always a little too much. I wanted two sounds. I wanted bridge pickup, tight, aggressive, high output, focused, a lot of low end, slamming. And then I wanted pristine, clean, super bright, bell-like, you know, PAF, but brighter kind of thing going on here. And that's what that's all I wanted. And so I kind of had to sit down and start narrowing things down. A lot of times you can get overwhelmed with, like, the auction paralysis. A lot of people think, oh, man, I want a guitar that will do everything. I want a guitar that has 20 different tone options. It's got all these voicings. It's got all these things, blah, blah, blah. And then you realize when you play live, you don't use any of that stuff. And that's kind of the realization I came to. I, I used to play Ibanez's a lot, and they had this five-way switching thing with two humbuckers and coil splitting and all this stuff. And that was cool, but, I, you know, live, I usually wound up just using one or two sounds because it was too much of a hassle for me to kind of, oh, I can't, which notch is it? It's the second notch, or it's the fourth notch, or it's this or that, you know. I wanted to just reach up, there's my sound, or there's my sound. I didn't want to have to like fiddle with a bunch of different positions and find the right one and, and pop a coil thing here or whatever it was. Like When you're playing live, you just don't have the wherewithal to like deal with a lot of that stuff, right? So I wanted to narrow it down and have my two sounds that were very easily right here, like easy for me to get to. Another thing, another reason why I like Les Pauls is because the switch is up here. A lot of people don't like that, and I get it. Some, you know, if, if you play like this, you might accidentally hit it. But I usually play back here, very anchored to the bridge. So this was never in my way. And if I wanted to switch channels real quick, right there. Right there. Because of how I play and how I pick, it was real close to me. I can get it with the back of my thumb. I can get it with my hand like that. Down here, like on a Strat or an SG, I used to have an SG, and my problem was anytime I would try to use it live and I would go to change uh, pickups, it was like I had to leave like everywhere I wanted to be on the guitar playing, come down here, flick the switch, and then come back up here. It was like so out of the way, and I, I, I didn't like that. Just because my playing style, this is actually much easier. I can get it as I'm coming in for a strum or something like that. It, it just fit my style a lot more. And so I think when it comes to guitars, that's the thing you need to do is you need to start narrowing things down. A lot of people kind of want to go the other direction and have as many options as they can have and have all this stuff going on with their guitar. And then when they play live, they don't use 75% of that stuff. They're using one or two things. Everything else is kind of in the way. So, you know, now if, if you're the kind of person that needs all that stuff, that's cool, you know. But, again, we're talking about designing a guitar rig with a purpose. And I realized the purpose 
I was going for. I needed a couple of sounds. I wanted them to be consistent, and I wanted them to be easier for me to get. So I started at the top and worked my way down. I started with the guitar and said, <clears throat> here's the layout and, you know, the hardware and the devices that are going to work for me to achieve the sounds I hear in my head. Right? I want this clean tone. I want this dirty tone. So that kind of narrowed the guitar thing down for me. Um, and then I wanted to have two guitars that basically did the exact same thing. So that's what I have. Both these Les Pauls have the same pickups in them, same strings, the same tuning. Like, So if I break a string live, when I go to grab the second Les Paul, it's, you know, I'm not going to have to kind of rethink anything. That was kind of the issue with having the SG, was I'd be playing a Les Paul, you know, something would happen, I'd set it down, I'd grab the SG, I'd be playing, and in the middle of the song, I would go to switch, and I would go like this, and nothing would happen, because there's no switch there. The switch is down here. And I was like, <sighs> yeah, everything was just different enough to where it kind of threw me off live, because when you're playing live like that, you're like muscle memory, you know, you're not really, oh no, the switch is down here. I forgot. Like, it, yeah. So anyway, two guitars, almost identical, doing the same thing. So when it came to the amps, I said, I don't have my Marshall here, but I'll, again, try to have a picture of it up here or something. When it came to the amp, I wanted an amp that was two channels. I knew that. Um, I had a single channel Marshall before, a JCM 900 uh, Mark III, and super cool amp, sounded great. <clears throat> but being one channel made it real difficult. I couldn't get the clean tone I wanted, so I got rid of that amp, and I got the JCM 2000, and I love that amp. The heavy tone, like the overdrive channel, is awesome. The clean channel's super, super bright and pristine. Um, <clears throat> the one problem that I have with, this is kind of just Marshalls in general, was they don't have a lot of low end in them. Um, and so that was kind of bothering me. So I wanted to have, especially being the only guitar player in my band, we used to have two guitar players. And it wasn't really a problem then, but with me being the only guitar player now, I came to the conclusion that my tone was lacking a little bit. It was just a little thin. Um, so the issue with some of these older Marshalls and like Orange Amps and stuff like that is they don't have resonance controls on them, like a lot of modern amps do, like a like a 5150 or you know something like that will have power amp controls on it, it'll have resonance and presence on it, and a lot of amps don't have that. Um, my JCM 2000 has a presence control, <coughs> it's okay, but it doesn't have a resonance control. So <coughs> I don't have it with me because it's with my amp, it's in like the, my amp is in a case and it's pedal is in there. Um, so I'll put a picture of it here so you can see the pedal. It's the Guptech Quebec. I think that's the name of the company, Guptech. Um, a buddy of mine turned me on to this pedal and it's super awesome. It goes in the effects loop of the amp and it basically gives you a presence and resonance control. Super awesome pedal. That's been like my game changer lately. That has been like the icing on top of the cake that was missing, right? Was this pedal. <clears throat> um, I absolutely love it. So again, just building the rig toward a singular purpose, right? Like, I realized I had this issue and I loved everything else about the amp and the rig. So instead of trying to really overcorrect it, it was like, this is a very simple solution. The pedal costs like $100. Very simple solution to the issues I was having. Because I really like the amp, and the bigger thing was I have designed, so it's been here the whole time, you can see my pedal board. I've designed this pedal board to work around my JCM 2000 specifically. So that amp is like the focal point of my rig. And this pedal board interfaces with that amp in a perfect way. And it's taken me a long time. It's taken me a lot of different iterations of this pedal board to really dial it in and get there. And that's sort of the, again, to kind of like circle back and hammer in the whole point of this video is looking at my rig with a purpose. Like there's certain things I'm trying to achieve. There's certain tones I want and I want consistently. 
and I want easily. I don't want to have to do a lot of things for those tones. So, I'm going to kind of run down what's going on here. Um, the whole focal point of the board is the Boss MS-3. So, I've talked about this thing before. The MS-3 does a ton of different things. Um, and I'm utilizing it in a lot of different ways. It, it's kind of like advertised function is that it's a pedal looper. What that means is it this this unit has three effects loops in it. And so you can put different pedals in those effects loops and then you can program them to these buttons down here. <clears throat> but what you can you you can program them to where they just turn the pedal on and off, which is would would be easier than trying to step on multiple pedals because the buttons are closer, you could hit two at the same time. That would be good enough. But it's even better than that. It it has like banks in it. So you can make patches. So for example, like my patch one here is my dirty tone. And it has this Aris Effects aggressive screamer. So the goal with my dirty tone was I wanted a really tight, focused, real like <clears throat> kind of you know dirty tone. Um, a lot of gain, but real tight, real focused. So the Gup Tech pedal gives me all the low end I could want. It gives me a resonance control for my Marshall, and I can just crank it, and I can get all the low end out of that amp that you normally can't get out of a Marshall amp like that. But you can go too far and kind of overdo it. And now my really nice, tight, focused pickup and my, uh, you know, amp are kind of getting a little too much. So the Aeris FX Aggressive Screamer. For years, people have been using tube screamers in front of metal amps to, like, tighten up the low end and kind of push the mid-range a little bit. You just turn the gain all the way down. You turn the level up to taste however you want it. And then you you have your tone. Right? The Aeris FX Aggressive Screamer has a, a fourth knob on it called the Tight Knob. And this Tight Knob lets you actually control how loose or tight the low end in the amp is. So the kind of combination of having the Quebec pedal that gives me all the low end I could want and then having this pedal to where I can tighten that low end up just perfectly. It's like it's like the perfect balance, yin and yang kind of thing. It's like as much low end as I want and then back it off just a hair here. Like tighten it up just enough. It It's a awesome combination. Like I, I'm so stoked about this combination of these two pedals. Um, and then this MS3 also has its own effects built in that you can program in the patch as well. So I have a noise gate from this unit on my patch one. So this guy and the noise gate, good to go. Um, <clears throat> Lately I've been using like the octave kind of stuff. I've been doing a lot of that. Um, like a low sub octave underneath the riffs I'm playing. Again, only guitar player. It adds some texture. It adds a lot of low end. It fattens up what I'm doing. So this has that going on in it. And it also has either of these pedals. So I have these pedals in the same loop. And depending on the song, I might have the HM2 on. I might have the fuzz on. It just depends on the song. Right. But I'm always using one of these two pedals with that octave function. And then just giving it kind of different flavors depending on the song. Um, again, the Doom, the Does It Doom Doom Saw is like a HM2. This is a Fuzz. The God City Ugin Steel. Um, another thing that I do a lot is like these kind of little transition guitar parts where they sound real lo-fi, like no low end, real scratchy and lo-fi sounding and kind of like backed off some. And so my patch number three, I've used all kinds of effects inside this thing, EQs and stuff like that, to make like a lo-fi 
you know, like it sounds like it's coming out of a little telephone speaker or something, guitar tone for that. And then last but not least, I have my clean tone. And my clean tone is the, the clean channel on the Marshall and this Klon clone in front of it. And that's the beautiful thing about this is the MS-3 will change channels on my JCM-2000. Now, it won't change channels on every amp, but it will on some. So if you have, like, my, my JCM-2000 just has a quarter-inch TRS input for the channel switching. And this has a quarter inch TRS output on it that I can use. So I have that. I have some inputs on the side right here, and they're labeled. One says guitar in, one says amp out, one says TRS out. And so that's this coming out of here, going to my amp, and it changes, and this will change the channel. And all of that's programmed one of these patches. So, and then. Outside of this unit, I have a wah pedal and a delay and an echo. Those are outside the unit just because the delay and the echo are outside the unit just because I like to mess around with them sometimes in songs, and I can just step on it whenever I want. It's not married to a patch or anything like that, um, so I can just kind of mess with it. And the Terra Echo, if you have it in the loop, when you change patches, it chops the tails off the Terra Echo. If you have it outside of this, when you turn it off, the tails naturally, like, they just naturally kind of decay on their own. It sounds a lot more organic. So that's why they're outside of this thing. Um, and so this whole pedal board was designed with intent. I really sat down and thought about the tones I wanted to do. The heavy rhythm tone, the octave fuzz thing, the lo-fi, you know, guitar kind of transition tone that I use, and my clean tone. And I really sat down and thought about those are the four tones <clears throat> I want to use. Um, I don't need anything else. So I don't need a bunch of other stuff because I'm not going to use it. So I have everything on here I'm going to use. Um... And I think a lot of people can kind of get overwhelmed with the option paralysis of a lot of this kind of stuff, right? You wind up with an amp, you just buy an amp, you just buy a bunch of pedals, you just buy a multi-effects unit or something. And you don't really sit down with an intent. You just kind of, um, I'm jamming, I'm playing with people, I got a distorted tone, um, I throw together a clean tone. You know, whatever it is, and there it is. So... If you really want to take your tone and your like live performance to a different level, kind of sit down and evaluate the gear you have and see if any of that gear fights against you. If any of that gear is inconvenient for you to do the things you do with. Like, for example, I, I also own a Marshall Mode 4. And I love that amp. And I use it in the studio to record some stuff with because it sounds awesome. But... I can't use it live because this won't change channels on it. So I have to use the foot switch for it in conjunction with this pedal board. And then I have to like step on the foot switch and the pedal board at the same time. So I have to kind of set it up in a way that will let me do that. I've tried it and it's just super inconvenient. Right? Well, I can step on one button with my JCM 2000 and each one of these buttons will do five, six, seven different things, whatever I've programmed them to do, right? So using an amp that this won't control doesn't, it, it, it doesn't work, right? <clears throat> Same thing like with this con pedal. This con pedal I bought specifically for the JCM2000. Like it sounds really good in front of that clean tone, that clean channel. I mean, some amps, it doesn't really sound that good in front of it. It just depends. Like, the way I like to set it and and the way I'm trying to use it. So, the reason I have the con in front of the clean tone and the tube screamer in front of the dirty tone is because my JCM2000, as much as I like it, the amp has shared EQ. So, each channel doesn't have its own independent EQ. So, I have the EQ on the amp set a little heavier and bassier for my dirty tone 
And then with the Klon, I can kind of dial some of that out with the tone control of the Klon and make it make the clean channel a lot brighter. So, right, intent. I set my amp up one way, and then I'm using this to completely change it for my other tone. <clears throat> just thinking about things like that. I didn't just go, oh, well, my clean tone's kind of dark and muddy, and I guess I'm just going to have to live with that. No, I didn't do that. I found a solution for it, and I made it to where it was easy to integrate, and it doesn't inconvenience me in any way. It's stepping on one button. Boom. Clean tone with reverb and this in front of it. That's another thing. My JCM2000 has independent reverb controls for the channels. I like reverb on my clean tone. I don't like reverb on my dirty channel. So a lot of amps will just have one like global reverb and the reverb is on or it's off. JCM2000 doesn't have that. I can turn the reverb off on the dirty channel and have it on on the clean channel. And it's just set that way. So when I switch patches from dirty to clean, I don't have to do anything. It's It just happens. It's just there. Um, so playing live has become super... I won't say easy for me, but, but it, it's just become a lot more convenient. It's a lot less things I have to think about. I step on one button, and I go from my tight, distorted rhythm tone to my clean tone with reverb on it and compression and whatnot, right? It It's just streamlined performing live, and all it took was sitting down and kind of thinking about what the intention of my tones were and how I wanted to execute them in a live setting. Um, <clears throat> so that's just something to think about, you know. Uh, if you have a guitar that you like, don't be afraid to swap pickups out in it, swap potentiometers out in it. Dial it in. Um, you don't have to leave it the way it is. You don't have to be stuck with how it is. If it's got a dark pickup in it, or if it's too bright, you can change that. You know, if you like the neck and you like the guitar, you don't have to get rid of it. Figure out how to make it do what you want it to do. And if it just won't, for whatever reason, then okay, then fine. Then move on from it and find something that will. And it, it took me a while to figure that out. I mean, it, it might seem kind of simple and basic to some people, um, but I think it's something that a lot of guitarists just don't really consider. They just kind of think, oh, well, that's the way a Les Paul sounds. You know, that's the way a Strat sounds. If I'm going to play a Strat, that's just the way it sounds. If I'm going to play a Les Paul, that's just the way it sounds. Not really. You can make it sound however you want. Um, same with the pedal board. You know, they might think, like, well, I've got my pedal board, and I just have all my pedals on it, daisy-chained, you know, drive pedal, noise gate, reverb delay they're all chained and when I step on them I have to do, 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 to get my dirty tone and then do, 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 to get my clean tone I gotta step on four different pedals every time I wanna go from dirty to clean no you don't there's ways to get around that um, and this is just one of them there's a lot of different ways to get around those issues and to develop your rig with a sense of intention and deliberateness so, hope you guys like the video. Um, that's kind of my whole overall point here is just to kind of reevaluate. You know, don't just settle with what you got going on. Just sit down, reevaluate, analyze, and figure out how to streamline and have some intention and some deliberate action behind the gear you use, the tones you're going for. Really just self analyze. Um, it's made me a lot better of a musician. It's made me a lot better of a guitar player. And I think it's personally made my guitar tones a lot better too. Um, and that might not mean a whole lot to just like random people in the crowd or the audience, you know, but it does to me. Um, I feel like my guitar tones have come a long way over the years. So, um, <clears throat> hope you guys like the video. I know it's kind of crazy to talk about guitar tones for 30 minutes and then not actually hear any sorry about that um not in the just i said i don't have my amps and stuff here with me 
Um, eventually, though, I will I will make a video eventually where I hook the whole rig up and mic it up, and we kind of go through it, and you know that way you can actually hear what I'm talking about. So maybe the next video will be a part two of this. I'll have the rig here at the studio, and we can do that. So uh, thank you guys. Um, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, comment on the video, tell me what you think about all this. Uh, tell me if this is something you've ever done, if you've ever been this reflective and philosophical about your guitar tone, or if you just kind of roll with what you have. I'll be back next week.